There was a tornado, mm. um, and this was 1988, okay? So in November, oh. this day 35 years ago, there was a tornado that went right across Springfield. Uh, and F1. Now, if, if you're not familiar, you're like, wait a minute, I thought it was EF1. It is now. Uh, I think it was yeah. 20, I forget the year. They changed it based on new research. Uh, the F scale was developed by Dr. Theodore Fujita, not Fajita, and they named the scale after him. And really, it's an approximation. It's, mm -hmm. it's designed to guesstimate the wind speed based on the damage that it produces. And now they've got the EF scale. And within each number, there are a number of indicators that mm -hmm. say, OK, if, if the home is, you know, has the roof off, we think the winds are about this. Mm -hmm. If it had hurricane ties into brick, then we think the wind is this. A lot of things. And they're trained to go out there and, and look at the damage. In any case, 1988, they didn't have all that. Mm -hmm. It was just the original scale, and this was an F1. Uh, but I'll show you the uh, path here. Uh, this was something that had a 20-mile path. Wow. And so it started very close to the Billings area. It lifted for a bit, and then at point uh, B there on the map is when it touched down again, and then it stayed on the ground for 20 miles and went up to uh, the northeast side of Springfield. And as you might guess, with that kind of path, did a whole bunch of damage. Now, if that same path happened today, it would be worse. Obviously, yeah. There's a lot so more people. More stuff in there, right? Sure. I mean, back then, West Bypass wasn't a thing. <laughs> you know, all, all the businesses True. out on that side of town didn't exist. In fact, I don't remember exactly what year the Battlefield Mall was built, but Steve Grant and others have told me, hey, that used to be a field, you know, so uh, certainly the city has grown. But they estimated damage, even back then, was about $25 million. Ooh, so, goodness. But the, the fascinating thing is no damage, or I'm sorry, no deaths and no injuries. Wow. So I would love to go back and be a fly on the wall that day and, and wonder, you know, because back then they had radar. Um, mm -hmm. Doppler radar had been discovered sometime prior to that, but it was operational, I believe, only in Oklahoma City. Um, mm -hmm. A meteorologist there that works, I think he's retired now, but in the 80s, he was like the guy because Enterprise Electronics, who built KY-3's radar, Storm Tracker 3, built the very first operational Doppler radar for television station. National Weather Service didn't have it yet. Wow. It was in research mode, but they're slow about stuff. Uh, so uh, you know. just as a comparison, Springfield's Weather Service got theirs installed in 1995. So in the early 80s, I believe it was 82, Gary England, who was a legendary forecaster down there, um, if you've ever seen the movie Twister, now we're going back a ways. We've all seen it a hundred thousand times. Gary England had a, a, a little cameo in there. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he was the guy in the old television station talking oh. about, hey, this is a big one. This is such and such a That's Gary England. That is fascinating. Yeah, they had him on the film. And so huh. he was the guy that had the very first Doppler radar used in television. It it did not, uh, it preceded the National Weather Service. And so all that to say, um, in 1988, there was no Doppler radar in Springfield. It was just mm -hmm. plain old radar, so they didn't have the ability to see wind inside. Mm -hmm. Now, if they had a big hook on it, that's then a different thing. Then you can see the shape. I was like, okay, yeah. there's probably a tornado there. Uh, but the fact that it went right through the middle of town and there were no injuries fascinates me, uh, especially considering it was in November. And based on the timing, uh, let's see, 17... 20, it would be 5.28 p.m. So it would have been dark. Oh, this time of year, yeah. Yeah, would have been dark. I, I mean... Did they have... My mind's just blown. Accurate record keeping? That's the thing. It just seems so crazy to me. No one would have been injured or... Killed. Yeah, that, that re and the fact that it was F1 and mm -hmm. did $25 million damage, how was there nobody injured? I don't know. That is fascinating. So anyway, Nicolette Zangier is actually trying to dig into this and get some pictures. You know, of course, if that happened today, we'd have terabytes of home video from people mm -hmm. on their phones. But that didn't exist back then. So um, hopefully some pictures of damage, things like that. She's working on that, I think, for today. But 35 years ago. And honestly, uh, while we think of most tornadoes happening in the spring, they can happen in the fall. And I don't suppose we have any chance of that this week. Uh, no.